Uh, I wanted to redo the last video that I did because um, looking at that, I realized um, you cannot see at all the ink on the board. I have realized that as I was recording it. So I'm going to redo my thought experiment uh, and try to explain this again. How do I flip this? Basically, this is how my thought experiment went. So assume that there... Did I get a Sharpie without ink? Okay, I got a red marker. Not what I would have wanted, but okay. So this is how my thought experiment went. So assume that you have two people. You have Palmer here. I'm just gonna put H. And you have Peter. And so Homer and Peter are both behind this wall. And behind it, there is an elephant. Just gonna do a rough drawing in a bill of an elephant <laughs> so bad. and so naturally their view of this element uh, elephant is obscured they cannot immediately verify for themselves if the elephant is or is not here but they have every reason to believe that there is an elephant there they just you know assuming kind of from an idealistic perspective that they just have all the sort of objective facts that would lead them to the conclusion there is an elephant behind here. And so let's assume that Homer thinks, okay, well, I've been given all the information that I can regarding the uh, existence of this elephant behind the wall. Therefore, there's an elephant behind the wall, which is a true statement. So that is true. But Peter, for whatever reason, decides that the better thing to do is not to trust that at all. He decides that... Uh, not to trust his intuition that there is an elephant behind the wall and that he's just going to say, no, there isn't an elephant. And I just choose to doubt that, which is a false statement. So the problem with this is that despite being given every single reason to believe something, they appeal not to any specific logical fallacy, not saying that, oh, well, I heard people say that uh, they're, you know, isn't an elephant behind the wall or ap appealing to, uh, well, if there's red, if there's an elephant behind the wall, then we're all going to die. You know, appeal like making all of these irrational statements. Instead, he appeals not even really to, uh, anything illogical. He just decides that, well, I'm just going to doubt that it's there because it's better for me to doubt that there is something there than there is for me to say that there is or isn't. When intuitively, you have, like, this is an ideal scenario. You know, you have everything that you need to figure out that there's an elephant behind there. And so I'm using this thought experiment to kind of illustrate a point that I uh, pretty firmly believe in, which is that uh, I think we do kind of place too much of an emphasis upon uh, rational inquiry to, like, if you look at, like, a lot of the sciences, um... The scientific method is a wonderful thing. It's, it's like the uh, apex of rational thought. But even with uh, something like that, you still kind of need the assumption that things around you are understandable. And, you know, you need to kind of assume that the universe is comprehensible. And we don't know why the like, why we have the ability to comprehend the universe. You need that kind of assumption and that, uh, somewhat intuitive understanding of things. Other evidence that I have uh, for this claim that you need intuition to understand things is based off of just how much we've been able to learn from just people who uh, decided to just use their imaginations and try to uh, use what's already inside of them instead of, you know, specifically using a like any sort of method. Like you have with uh, Einstein. Einstein's a very interesting case. He came up with he came up with a lot of his best ideas and his theories just in passing uh for instance he got his idea for the theory of relativity by just having a dream like i'm like i'm not like i'm not even kidding like he just fell asleep one night had a dream and he was like hold on a second there's something here i'm going to explore this and so with more and more time he works on his theory you know he does the math he does all this sort of stuff and then eventually after another point, he's just playing, like, he's stuck on, he's stuck on the theory, so he's just playing the violin one day, and all of a sudden, he's just like, 
Ow, shoot. I have a cut on my hand. That's why I cringed. But, you know, suddenly he's like, Eureka! That, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, the dude was just doing all of this in passing, and, you know, suddenly he comes up with this theory, he does the math, he shows his work, and give enough time, and that's pretty much our basis of modern physics. That's really cool. More than that, like, you also have a lot of uh, really profound, interesting insights that have been found in a lot of uh, pre-scientific times. Like, you have a lot of uh, psychological insights that uh, are very, like, useful to understanding people and understanding the brain and the mind that have been kind of in circulation with them. Like, you know, for instance, like a lot of Indian circles, like, uh, a lot of Buddhism has a lot of these sort of insights that whenever we put them under a scientific perspective, it's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, you know, you can apply that to um, CBT or to uh, an understanding of the mind. And you even have stuff like Indian sages who, you know, India has had the idea of, uh, had the idea of the atom for like thousands of years and that's even originally where the word comes from. It comes from, I I really want to say it's from the Indian word Atman, which means soul. And so this whole idea that everything is made of these um, indivisible particles is derivative of just kind of insights that a bunch of these Indian sages has or had, which is really cool. I'd like to end this off with a point that I kind of learned from Schopenhauer and I thought about, and I mean, honestly, it's true. The thing with rational thought is that the rational part of our brain is, and I'm not kidding, like, like, like look at a model of the brain and look at where um, a lot of our functions are. You'll find that our ability to reason, our ability to rationalize, this is actually something that's more, that's, like literally on the outer peripheral layer of the brain. And, you know, it's kind of, it, it's not really as built into us as we previously thought, which is insane. There's this one quote out of Essays and Aphorisms. I can't remember specifically where it's at. I'll try and cite it. Uh, you know, there's this one thing that Schopenhauer says that if you try to understand the world in rationalistic principles... It'll be like you're trying to, you know, cover two circles without having any end of that circle protrude, which is impossible. You're trying to have them both simultaneously be covered at the same time without any edge being exposed. That's not going to happen. But if you kind of just work a little bit more, like, intuitively or try to uh, understand things that are just kind of frankly obvious, the world becomes a lot more of an easy place to understand. My personal epistemology, uh, this is kind of the uh, philosophy of uh, how to get the truth that like, I personally use just in my own daily life. Uh, I would like to mention that I'm not saying that rational thought or scientific in inquiry is uh, not useful. I'm just saying that they're more like, kind of are from Einstein, you know, they're more servants than they are uh, the actual total way to understanding things, right? You find that science has a hard time explaining, like, you know, a good few things. It, it has a hard time explaining a lot. Uh, it can't necessarily explain, it can explain what faculties are behind hearing, but it can't explain why we hear things. Like, why are we conscious? That's something that science has yet to be able to explain. And so maybe one day it will, maybe one day it won't. I don't know. But my final ultimate point is that, uh, and I'm just going to steal from my son. I, I, I can't think of a better way to put this. Uh, we live in an era in which we value rationality to such a point where we cannot fully understand things and it's more so that imagine uh imagination and intuition is 
the proper way to understand things, but that our ability to reason, our ability to engage in like scientific discourse and scientific reasoning are the servants that we kind of have to understand things. So that's what I personally do. I just kind of go off of what uh, intuitively makes sense, and I will try like afterwards to kind of mentally test in my head or look up to see if I'm correct in that assumption. And so that's pretty much my uh, philosophy of philosophy, I suppose. All right, that's all. Bye, all.